not only am I going to repeat pretty much what I said, I'm going to play the clip for you, okay? Because you, John Ziegler called us angry that you're taking shots at me. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I said. My problem with this is, is that Jerry Sandusky has never told the damn truth. According to him, he's never molested anybody. <clears throat> Why in the world would I, would I pay any attention to anything the man says? At this point, certainly, just please rot in jail, Jerry. And then as as regards you, okay, John, I, and I will tell you this right now, I feel kind of sorry for you because I think you're being used as a tool here. Now, this is what I said. This is the actual clip from the show, okay? <laughs> I, it occurred to me this morning that, that what he's doing, in effect, he may not realize that he's not, and I'm sure his motivations are different, but in effect, he's enabling Jerry Sandusky to reach out from his prison cell and perpetuate his evil. And, and, and that's and then you call me. I said, well, I'll answer any questions you have. Uh, Jerry, I don't have any questions about Jerry Sandusky. I don't give a damn about Jerry Sandusky. I'm tired, and I think I speak for a lot of people. We're tired of hearing about him. But why are you why are you being used like this and allowing yourself to be used like this? Well, first of all, Mike, I thank you for the opportunity to be ripped in person as opposed to in abstentia. I appreciate well, and that's that. and that's and John, that's why I invited you to come come on the show. And, and okay? I appreciate all that. Right. And I hope and and you raised a lot of interesting questions and points. And I would love the opportunity to address all of them because I have an explanation for every single one of them. So, which you want me to? Which do you want me to address first? Why I'm being used as as a, a, a vehicle? for Jerry Sandusky. You're, you're like, you know, the, you know the term enabler. That You're, you're yeah, ending up, okay. this may not be your intention, but that's the way this is coming well, across. Well, hold on a second. First of all, one of the many things that was just said in the last several minutes that's inaccurate is that I'm trying to um, restore the image of Joe Paterno. No, uh, I have a website that has been devoted to finding out what really happened in the whole Jerry Sandusky <laughs> scandal, and it is my belief that Joe Paterno was railroaded in that scandal. And in the pursuit of trying to figure out what actually happened, I, among other things, interviewed Jerry Sandusky for three and a half hours. I've also uncovered many other things that no one else has uncovered, including the statement of the boy who was in the shower with Mike McQuarrie, who says nothing ever happened. And he said that as a 24-year-old married Marine. I also uncovered the interview that Joe Paterno did two weeks before he got fired, in which he makes it very clear he was not in the loop after passing off the information that Mike McQuarrie gave to him. So I, I, my pursuit here is the truth. And as part of that pursuit, there are truths and I know this because I spoke to him for three and a half hours, and much of what he told me ended up being confirmed by other sources and turned out to be verifiable. Jerry Sandusky may be the worst human being in the history of the world. That doesn't mean he's lying about everything. And, on, and in fact, when it comes to the Victim 5 case, which is what he specifically writes about in the letter which I posted at FramingPaterno.com, he is 100 percent factually accurate. That date didn't happen. And Penn State is using that August 2000 first date as a way to try to set up Spanier, Curley, and Schultz in their trial. This is clear. It's obvious. So he's not ripping victim number five. I don't think victim five even had anything to do with it. I think it was his lawyer who realized, and the investigators were all too happy to help, who realized that an August 2001 date was going to be worth a heck of a lot more money than a, in a 1998 date, especially one that was before the investigation that was determined to be unfounded in John, 1998. And guess what happened? He got paid a lot of money for okay. it. All right. John, I have a question. Here's, here's, I do have a question, actually, uh, after all. Because I said to you on the phone when you called in, and you were all angry, I and you said, angry. Well, I said I, "Yeah, I you were. Yes, you were. You, you I was, were." I offered to answer questions, and I said, "I don't have any questions about Jerry Sandusky, but I, I do have one for you." In all, all that three hours or three and a half hours that you spent right. with this piece of crap in the prison, recording his conversation, did he ever once admit to molesting anybody? Actually, you know, it's funny that you say that because I believe that he did. You do. And you can hear, the, and you can hear the recording at our website. Uh, well, tell, I, uh, tell, tell, tell me what it was. That he said that you that, that you consider to be an admission. I know you. I know that it's that you want to believe that I'm this bad guy who's no. helping this horrendous person. No, I think person. you're being but, used. Well, let me get, let me tell you the facts of what really happened. I spent hours and hours with Jim Clemente, who is the uh, Paterno family sex crimes expert, former FBI guy, has been on television all the time. You know, he was a victim of sexual abuse himself. I said, Jim, this is before I interviewed Jerry. Tell me how I can get Jerry to confess. 
and he, he, he took me exactly through all the steps. And I threw everything at Jerry Sandusky, and, and I, I laid it on thick, and I hit it out of the park. And Jerry did not confess in total, but he did say something that I thought was maybe the most important thing he said to me in the three and a half hours, which was, I never molested those boys, but I may have tested boundaries. Now, in, in a rational world, no adult male in the history of the world is ever going to say, I tested boundaries uh, physically with teenage boys. I believe that that is a truthful statement by Jerry Sandusky, and it is consistent with everything else he told me in the three and a half hours. However, that is a far cry from many of the things that Jerry Sandusky was convicted of, and certainly the public perception is created by the media, that he was somehow raping boys on the 50-yard line at Beaver Stadium on Saturday afternoons, which is why people don't understand that Joe Paterno had no idea, and Penn State had no idea, that he, he was a pedophile. That's why I'm trying to figure out what really happened here. I do not currently believe that the facts indicate that the caricature of Jerry Sandusky as this hideous monster who's going around raping boys is accurate. And so I'm sorry that I care enough about the truth to be allowed to allow myself to be ridiculed by people like yourself i get it i got very tough skin i and i don't really care at this point because all i care about is the truth and i'm a hell of a lot closer to finding out what really happened here than anybody else is because i got no agenda i'm just trying to find out what happened and on this particular issue jerry sandusky is a hundred percent accurate, which is why I released the letter at our website. Well, I don't think I would characterize what I said regarding yourself as ridicule, but if you want to take it that way, you go right ahead. Whatever well, what, Whatever it is, criticism, ridicule, whatever. I, I'm you, just you, stating, you know, I'm stating the truth as I see it. I right. see you being used as a tool and an enabler but, here. And, 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 wait a minute, and, hold and, on a second. I mean, with this notion that I'm an enabler, you know, it's amazing because I'm not a celebrity. I get the fact that I'm not a celebrity. It dictates how all of this is perceived. But how many jailhouse interviews have there been with people who have murdered multiple people? I mean, Jerry, Jerry did never killed anybody. All right, let's make that clear. But the people have been, you know, serial murderers, and, and those who interview them don't get accused of enabling them. They, 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 they're trying to find out what happened to figure out the truth here. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not enabling Jerry Sandusky. I, gave, I was very tough on Jerry Sandusky. I came closer to getting him to confess, and I believe he actually did confess to his crimes to me than anybody else did. And, and this, but, but on the other hand, I do believe that Jerry was accused of things he did not do. All right, all right. And, all right take, take a breath, John. i got to take a break here, okay? So, so just, just hang on. John Ziegler, uh, we'll continue with him in a moment here. Let me refresh the table if you're just joining us. So earlier this afternoon, I was talking about the fact that I woke up this morning to yet another missive from that creep, Jerry Sandusky, who I wish would, I desperately wish would rot in prison or, or be taken care of by one of his fellow inmates, uh, as the case may be, preferably the latter. At any rate, it's uh, Jerry Sandusky threw a letter to John Ziegler, who, uh, Ziegler, who is on the line with us right now. Uh, says that, oh, he couldn't possibly have uh, have molested this uh, kid that just got a settlement from uh, Penn State. They're trying to, Penn State's trying to uh, refurbish its image, I guess is, is, is how you put it here. Uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what Jerry Sandusky's trying to claim. No, no, Jerry is saying, with regard to victim number five, that the date that Penn State paid victim five a lot of money for, which is a critical, critical date, because it's after the Mike McQuarrie episode, it and cannot be true, and, and it, is, it is a change. Oh, okay, but fine. Testimony. But but when you read the letter, what what Sandusky is trying to say is that that Penn State's trying to you know make all this go away, make themselves look better uh, by, by making these payoffs and trying to well, and trying to build true. the case against uh, against the, uh, the the three uh, stooges, as I called them, uh, the executives who are going to be facing trial. And that is absolutely true. Okay. and and that is that so, is one of my major so, points. So that, so my ahead. but what I said about so you call. Us and you're all upset because I you you believe took a shot at you and you called it ridicule. You can take all the shots you want. I just and, want to be able to tell my side of the story. That's yeah, all. That's fine. And 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 here's why I invited you back. I invited you to come on the show, even though I, my first my first inclination was so, as I said to you, I don't have any questions about Jerry Sand. I don't care about Jerry Sandusky. I'm sick and tired of hearing about the guy. But you know what? I'm not a guy who hides in a studio someplace and says one thing on the air and then when when you know to the to the person's face, I do something else. I'm not doing it. I'm telling you straight up, 
I feel right? sorry for you because I think you're getting used here, and and I don't and, think and you I'm see it. What your theory is on why I'm being used? For, to because what, what end am I being? I, I don't know. I, I don't know, John. I don't what am know. I getting out of it? I don't know, John. Well, you know, let me. Tell you, I'm glad. I appreciate you feeling sorry for me, but let me tell you something. I sleep incredibly well at night because I know that everything I have done here has been with the best of intentions, and that I have come closer to finding out the real truth of this matter than anybody else. And unfortunately, we're now living in a world, and I think you would agree with this in general, where the news media is completely uh, inept, corrupt doesn't care, only cares about ratings, the truth is dead, journalism is dead, and the real story of what happened here has been lost. Penn State and Joe Paterno got railroaded, and I am more and more convinced every day that while Jerry Sandusky is, in fact, a pedophile, I believe him to have been a different kind of pedophile than he has been perceived to be, uh, what, and I believe that he the, did, the things he did not do. What the hell does that mean? He's a different kind of pedophile than the one he's... Most been. pedophiles do not actually have sex with their victims. Victims. And I believe that the that, that the evidence that Jerry Sandusky had actual sex with his victims is shockingly sparse. And if his name was Michael Jackson, he'd be playing golf right now. That's just a fact. Now, that doesn't make him a good person. It doesn't make him not, not worthy of being in jail. But those are the facts. And that is an incredibly important fact with regard to the context of this whole story and how it is that people have misperceived what happened at Penn State and specifically what Joe Paterno did, which has been my focus and why we created the website FramingPaterno.com. All right. John, John I, I got a dollar bank instant access. That's our instant, asset, uh, instant messaging system at our website, KDK.com. This is from a guy named Robert. Uh, he says he's an attorney. Okay. Okay. in his signature. He says, you're not going to like this, John. Then again, maybe you will. I don't know. It says, Mike, please have John Ziegler on your show as often as you can. The man is obviously a total raving nutcase. Seriously, <laughs> he could not sound more crazy if he started saying that Joe Paterno was framed by space aliens. It makes for great radio. Well, I'm glad that he's entertained. By the way, for the record, framing Paterno is not literal. It is a figurative term. Uh, I do not believe in conspiracies. This is not a conspiracy. This is actually a massive amount of cowardice, incompetence, and then back side protection uh, com coming together in a perfect storm uh, of epic proportions. That's what really happened here. I've written a free book called The Betrayal of Joe Paterno at the website where I detail all of this in excruciating detail. I've devoted over a year of my life to this without pay. Uh, if, that's a, if that makes me a raving lunatic, then that's an interesting statement about the society in which we live now, Mike, where someone who is pursuing the truth is a raving lunatic and who's actually gotten closer to that truth than the entire media industrial conversation complex, and I will bet my life that that is a factual statement that I just made. So All if that's the case, I'm glad right. he's entertained. The media industrial complex. I have to remember that one. All right, John, uh, on our 84 Lumber Project Professional Zoos line, John Ziegler, thank you for being with us. Thanks, Mike. All right, take care.